Hello! And welcome back to the spoiler cast. The show where we talk about movies and we don't care about spoiling them. And also today we're talking about movie news. We're 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 a, we're a commentary channel today. <laughs> um, well, no, I shouldn't say that. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about Shaun of the Dead. Yes. That, as of recording this, the eleventh, from what I understand, turned twenty years old yesterday. I'm pretty sure it was. It says so on Twitter, I think. We can Edgar check Wright, that. Edgar Wright liked it, so uh, <laughs> that, that must be true. Either United way, United Kingdom had had a uh, release date April 9, 2004. All right, nine. Okay. So the other day. <laughs> the other day. <laughs> And uh, I think that that's a cause for celebration, at least for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's 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 one of those heavily influential movies for me. Um, I saw it probably in 2004 or 2005, whenever it came out on DVD in Sweden. And uh, basically, anything I have written, finished or unfinished, <laughs> have been influenced by Shaun of the Dead since. Uh, Half our in, 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 in our uh, jokes between us and a bunch of your friends are Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, they're still Shaun of the Dead. Uh, yeah, I I I loved it back then. I I still love it today. Just watched it before this. Literally finished it before this. Uh, it's one of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. I appreciated it more watching it this time, even though I've watched it like. Oh, it's got to be like 10 to 20 times oh, by now. <laughs> easily, easily 20, 25 times. I mean, you watch it more than I do. but I There was a period uh, when I watched it several times like a month. Um, back in like my teens. Yeah. Probably during that summer break where you had nothing to do except counting how many times you watched movies no that was actually <laughs> that that was when i watched the uh, uh sasquatch, sasquatch dumpling, gang. dumpling gang or the sasquatch right. gang i watched it 31 times in a row so that that's that's uh, that's special <laughs> that's, have you watched it since i have like once or twice <laughs> <laughs> but that was in 2006 i think whenever yeah. that movie came out that's a movie we should talk about that's a movie nobody talks about it anymore yeah. Anyway, but that's not what we're doing today. We're talking about no, Shaun, we're talking about of, the Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. So I hadn't seen it in a while. Uh, we did an episode on the Cornetto trilogy a while ago. Yes. Let right? me refer to the the Instagram here. Was it um was it a patron episode or a, or a live <laughs> live a free episode? Live. I don't remember. Live. Good question. And I don't remember why we did it. What was the connect? Oh, it must have been around the time of uh, Last Night in Soho? Probably. 2021? Probably. Did we have the Instagram back then? <laughs> Can I, don't I refer know. to it? I don't know. You do the Instagram. I have no idea. Um, so we have talked about this before. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But I don't know exactly when that was. Yeah. I haven't watched it since Oh, yeah. Then. Here it is. Oh. Uh, November 11th, 2021. Yeah, so right around the time of uh, Last Night in Soho. Probably was yeah. the companion piece then. So now, Yeah, I think so. For all of you people who don't follow us on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. You get Actually, to hear it was in preparation for it, but yeah. Oh, okay. You get to hear what we think of uh, Shaun of the Dead. I, yeah. Do you, do you remember the first time you saw it? No, not okay. at all. This is one of those movies I vividly remember the first time because the first time i saw it i didn't see the whole movie i uh it was why not because uh, i was 14 15 well i must have been 15 because 2004 i was 15 well i didn't yeah. whatever i was 15 <laughs> I, i'm born in december so but 89 nothing counts so nothing yeah <laughs> it's i'm basically from the 90s but i was born in december so whatever I was 15, uh, yeah. obviously still living at home, and my best yeah. friend, best friends, their brothers, living across the street, they watched a lot of movies. That's kind of where my uh, my uh, my love for movies came from. They had so many movies. I had gotten to know them three years earlier, something like that, the summer of 2000 or 2001. Um, so it was like after dinner, 
something, whatever, I go over to hang out with them. They already have some people over, and they're watching a movie. And I was like, oh, what's this? And it's like, just, it's, uh, I didn't know it that back then, but it was Shaun of the Dead. And it's just yeah. like, as all the zombie stuff is starting to happen. It's, um, it's, uh, it's at, right after him and Liz break up. You know, yeah. when he leaves her, her apartment, her flat. Yes. Um, and they hang out at the bar. It's somewhere around there it starts. And I was like, oh, I'll sit down and watch this. And, you know, about an hour and a half, well, an hour and 20 minutes later, I was like, oh, my God, it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so I think I think I, I don't think I bought it, but, like, probably some day later, I just popped the, the, the VHS in uh, while they were up eating dinner or something. That was the whole, that was the whole idea. I came over, they went up to eat dinner, so I watched the movie while they, while they ate, and then we hung yeah. out. That was every day. Like, well, that was that was basically what happened with my friends as well. You know, if we had dinner, they weren't having dinner. So if they were at my place, they were at my room. Yeah, exactly. The opposite. That's also that's we, also how I watched. We for some reason had dinner earlier than other families. <laughs> yeah, that's also how I watched uh, Jackass the movie fourteen days in a row. Because <laughs> they they got it on VHS. They had one of those like. Movie club memberships. So they always had new movies sent to them. We had that for a while. Do you remember that? No, called, like, no I have home, no memory of that. Home club or something was called. You don't remember that? No. The okay. only thing I remember is going to the video store and renting movies. Okay. Anyway, they had that like for years and years and years. So they always had the latest movies uh, on VHS and eventually on DVD. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that that's that's how they got this movie very early. That's. That's how I saw Jackass a few uh, years earlier. Um, 14 times in a row. 14 <laughs> days in a row. Um, so, what did you think of Shaun of the Dead the first time you saw uh, half of it or the full movie? <laughs> when I saw the whole thing, I thought it was amazing. Because uh, there we go. <laughs> it, was also, it was also, just as I had become interested in horror movies and zombie movies, I think we've talked about I have talked about that, but in a video, yeah. not the podcast. Um, no, we've probably mentioned it, because we've talked a lot about zombie No, movies. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, specifically, I have a video about... Um, the first time I saw Nosferatu, yeah. the 20, 1922 version, and Evil Dead, which were the original Evil Dead, uh, which were both with my friend Martin, who had those movies. Um, and they, they, uh, the Evil Dead is another movie that is very, very, very influential to me, and very influential yeah. to Edgar Wright when they, he made uh, <laughs> yes. Shaun of the Dead, obviously. Um. So yeah, I'd I'd seen those movies just a couple of years earlier, and really like, oh, I like I like horror movies, I like zombie movies, but zombie movies were kind of not a thing really at that point. They were a big thing, and of course, the seventies and eighties, with yeah. all the like uh, exploitation or Italian Italian exploitation films. Yeah, but they weren't like but that. Wave was over. Yeah, they weren't, and they weren't in the mainstream really. No. Uh, I mean, you had. A couple of years earlier, you had uh, uh, the Resident Evil movie, but it was a big flop. Nobody watched it. I mean, some people. Yeah, that it. became a big thing a few years later. Yeah. When they kept <laughs> doing them for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you had Twenty Eight Days Later at the same time. They're just in the beginning of the 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 new millennium. Yeah. But they were like minor. They were minor hits. I mean, this was as well, but it became like a cult classic pretty quickly. Um. And also, in the same year, you had the uh, Zack Snyder adaptation of uh, Dawn of the Dead. Oh, right. It's 2004. Yeah. That's really what kicked off the new wave of zombie movies. Except after yeah. that, we had, like, a bajillion bad zombie movies. And some good. Some good ones. Sure. Um, but that I, I, I like to think this was really influential. Because um, three years later, when they did Hot Fuss, that's... That, that, that's when they really blew up as filmmakers, Simon Pegg and uh, Edgar yes. Wright. But it all started here. Um, yeah, so and, and so, so I've, I've loved it for 20 years. And like I said, <laughs> watching it today, I think I loved it even more. It is... Some people say that Hot Fuss is the better one. I'm torn, obviously. Yes. Yeah. It has a bigger budget. Um, it is a bit more grown up. Uh, it's all of that because it has three. They had three years, you know, between this and 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 Hot Fuzz. But be- that movie is more of you know. It's it's. I love action movies, but I love horror movies, specifically zombie movies, more. 
So I think for me, Shaun of the Dead is still the best one of the three. Um, and it, I think we said the same thing when we did the episode in 2021. Like, yeah, it's well, it's very close with Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, but uh, World's End is definitely the the the, the last weakest. of those three. Yeah, <laughs> the weakest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the, the the like the difference between Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead is more or less nostalgia and like just because Shaun of the Dead was the first one. Yes, and like it's. Uh... Like like the I original am, kind of yeah, and it's very it it speaks to me as a now thirty four not thirty one like you know he is in the movie <laughs> but as a thirty four year old salesman as I am I literally work <laughs> in moment, an electronic yeah. store yeah yeah um kind of you know in Arrested Development like I so much uh, empathize or sympathize or whatever <laughs> with with Sean in this movie uh and like i said it's 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 influenced me ever since i first saw it so i think that's why for me at least it's the better one and just like hot fuss though um it is it is 99% a perfect movie there are two oh, yeah. two minor things i don't like about it about Shaun of the dead yeah and that's not even things it's just two things that uh, stick out it's when uh, Sean and Liz are sitting down in her bedroom, uh, just as they're about to break up, and she has her little, her short little monologue when she says, um, when she says, "If I if I keep going back to that place, uh, I'll, end I'll end up, up like, like all those other sad fuckers, yeah. drinking myself to death, wondering what the hell happened." And she says it really fast. It's like it's like this, you know, classic. Oh, you have a long monologue. You really gotta get out fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fine. The thing is, you have to start off by having a regular conversation, which they don't have. I mean, they have, but no. then there's this cut to that part. Yeah. So it just comes off as it's it's supposed to be like she's breaking, she's like cutting off his sentence and just getting what she wants to say out. Yeah. But it doesn't really have that doesn't really have that tone or flow no. to be that way. Yeah. It feels very script yes. scripted. Yeah. That's one. And then... Oh, there's one thing I noticed now watching it. I forget what it is, though. Maybe there's just one thing. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I think so. There's only one thing, yeah. That's the only thing that, like... So, really... Bugs you, really. (laughs) Yeah. Because everyone else... Everyone is so good in the movie. Oh, yeah. Every every line of dialogue... uh, Every line of dialogue, you know... Uh, said by an actor is so perfect in the movie. Not even just the dialogue, just the sounds. Yeah. When they're playing the zombies and mom goes, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Except for that line read. Sure. Like, Damn it. <laughs> I didn't even think of it, to be honest. Okay. So. It's always, well, not always, but for a long, long time it has bugged me. But I think that's why you're noticing, though, it. Because you keep, you remember that being an issue. Yeah, yeah. If you try to forget about it, then you watch it. You might not notice it yeah, again. Yeah, but I don't think I can forget about it. I've seen it nah, so many times, not. and it's always bugged me. So, yeah. But other than that, ah, it's so perfect. Like how it's how it's how it's written, how it's structured, how it's directed. Um, all the all the musical, the, the needle drops, everything. Yeah. Um, the perfect mix of of comedy horror and you know like serious moments mm-hmm. it, it, it blends the tones so well uh and it the, the the most insane part is we've talked recently about we talked about rose glass and how you even though she's only made well even in her first movie you could see like she has a distinct style which you could even yeah. notice in her next, her last movie, Love Lies Bleeding, even though it's very different from her first movie, you could definitely tell, ah, oh, it's a Rose Glass movie. Sure, Here, yeah. Edgar Wright had directed things before. I mean, this is basically a spin-off of the TV show he made, Spaced, with the yeah. same uh, with the same people involved. <laughs> basically, all the same actors. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that was where the idea came from. They wanted to do a spaced yeah. movie, but then we're like, ah, we'll change branch out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, so he had he obviously had a lot of and that one has the exact same style of directing yeah it's just on a, made on a much smaller budget and for TV um, but still like, branching out and making a movie and have just 
having it be so, so distinct and having such a, a voice of his own, while at the same time uh, borrowing so much from other directors without yeah. it feeling like, oh, you're just, you're just like copying. No, no, he's, it's, it's an homage or it's a, <coughs> you know, it's a love letter, or whatever. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And despite what people say, he has <laughs> never, he has never, like, missed a beat. Y'all can say whatever you want about Last Night in Soho. That movie was awesome. But wait, people didn't people like People don't that? like it. People thought it was bad. Excuse you? You didn't know that? No. Okay. Then Because I'm not on Twitter, really, so I this probably missed all the discussion. This is just going to be a random banter <laughs> episode. Let's go to the letterbox, then. Let's, 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 oh, my God. You didn't know this? Hold up. No, it didn't even. That Last get... Night in Soho is like one of my favorite movies ever. I know. Well, it's of that year, I would say. No, no, no! It's in my top ten of all time so far. No, it's not yeah. that good. Uh, I mean, it's a five out of five for me. I, I had nothing. There was, there was oh, like you know people, people didn't like that. It was like. Oh what? So uh, uh, a sex trafficked uh, uh, woman is the bad guy in the movie? Like, no, there was like stuff like that. It was it was like uh, I don't know. Out of my okay, I have fourteen five stars on my letterbox. So I mean, <laughs> it's in my top fourteen, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it has a lot of good reviews as well. Um, but but like like. I'm just like Eloise because I'm too lonely and spent most of my time thinking about An- Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know what I don't know what that's supposed <clears> to mean. <throat> I get that she doesn't like it because it's a one and a half star. Yeah, <laughs> but like here, it's, it's so hard to make a. But here, this is from Carson Runquist, who's a fairly competent film critic YouTuber. He gave it two stars and it says worst case scenario Coraline. That's it. And then, then someone... This is the same problem men has. That's the thing. Here, two and a half stars. Men are bad, in it. Um, that's, that's, two, two stars. Uh... So I'm supposed to believe a girl from Cornwall who's been to London once can run street to street without using... Okay. okay. That's not... That's just being dumb. Yeah. Here's one... Here's one... I wonder if this... I don't think it is. She keeps popping up, though. A.O. Edibiri wrote a review. I wonder if that is the actress, A.O. Edibiri. I, I want it to be, but I'm not sure it is. Either way. Weird movie of what a guy thinks women are afraid of. There's more to it. Yeah, I, fe- I feel like people, people like... Hey, here, we got a, a three star by Trin. Uh, may contain spoilers, whatever. A movie where a woman in the 60s get taken advantage of when trying to start her music career and kills all the men who abused her is... Uh, way better standalone concept. The double feature of the movie with Ellie just watered that story down to me. Mm. I did like Ellie and I loved the performance, but the plot twists were, weren't twists and the ending was so soft. The build-up made me believe something crazy was going to happen and then nothing really happened. Nothing really happened? There were ghosts! Yeah. And, 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 and you know, she, she was the... I don't... Uh, I, I think it was more on Twitter back in the day. Um, yeah, I don't really understand why people didn't like that movie. <laughs> no, and Letterbox is not the right place to check. No, because they never write what they actually think. Just oh, no, oh, I funny. Mean, oh, see, see now, maybe if a lesbian directed it. Yeah. What? What? What does that mean? It, what, that's what, what, what that, I mean. First of all, what would that? It's, it's something like <laughs> it's it's no because it's like it's such a it's such a female story that Edgar Wright was not the right person to do it because he's such a dude. Like, but, but that's but not... He, but he's... Ugh, that's... I, I, I don't That's like not that. fair, first of all. And second of all, he did great. Yeah. I don't... Like, if you just didn't enjoy it, say that. You can't say it wasn't a well-made, well-written, well-performed movie. But the guy did it. Yeah. Despite a guy doing it, <laughs> if you want to be that way, then. Um. Yeah. No. I. I think. It, I mean. I mean. Yep. Yeah, I think people read too much into the politics of the movie. What he's. What he like. Someone called it 
tasteless and vile, like a cheap jump scare. Yeah. Despite, for years, considered Edgar Wright to be one of my favorite directors. Um, but this one, just what the fuck happened? I just found this tasteless and vile. Yeah, that's the whole thing because of the sex trafficking and the sexual abuse stuff. It's like... Uh, yeah, it's it's like it's, he's not a handling cheap jump scares the best way to explore this particular kind of trauma. Yeah, exactly. But it <sighs> that that's the thing that, oh. yeah, that you can't you can't make a it's not even a light hearted movie. It is it is oh grim. god no no exactly yeah. But it's like oh they're not treating it with the uh, with the uh, the amount of respect that they should. But they're this portraying like... it. But th- 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 but that's the thing though. They're showing you the trauma through all of the other stuff, through the ghost men and through the the fucking time traveling shit and all that stuff. It's 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 a way of of it's almost like a coping mechanism. Yeah. All of what happens to them is is trying to portray how a victim might feel around it, might experience life because of it. Yeah. Yeah, people pe- And it's very individual, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, people for some reason jumped on it I don't I don't get it it's it's such a beautifully made movie oh god yeah and like a genuinely at times like spooky oh yes Jesus uh, Christ yes with, with great performances by everyone involved 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 <laughs> involved involved yeah no that's yeah. that's bullshit last night in Zoo is amazing yeah I mean I mean, he got he got pretty good reviews. He got like a he got a sixty five meta score. Sure. Uh, and I, I'm 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 just worried that like like that people now are like oh no wait. It, like when his next movie comes out, they're gonna be like, no like like the magic is lost or something like oh no we don't now we don't like him, and then it's gonna be like. And then there's going to be tweets. This is me completely just speculating. Like, yeah. this is me doom scrolling in my head. People are like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I I knew from the beginning that he was just a bad director. I never even liked Sean of the Dead. I just, I fear that that is going to happen if the next movie I mean, is not amazing as well. I, uh, <sighs> yeah, anyway. No, I don't think so. Because first of all, if you want to be picky about it, he has... Two kind of different styles. They're, they are similar, obviously. But he makes two kinds of movies. He makes the Shaun of the Dead, Potfuss, Cornetto Trilogy kind of movie. And then he does Baby Driver, Last Night in Soho kind of movie. Which are more more serious. Yes. Yeah. Less. He excels in both. Oh, yeah. Though I, I can imagine that there's more just fun in general doing the Cornetto Trilogy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because you know the cast and and the subjects are much funnier and more lighthearted, already obviously. Mm. But th- th- they're both amazing styles, and it works perfectly for what he's trying to do. Yeah, like there's there's, I don't even remember having a complaint about Baby Driver the first time I saw it. I was like, no, this is exactly what I imagined this movie should be. Yeah, and he hit like perfectly, hit it on the the head. You know. Yeah. I, I I agree, but oh, I, I'm just annoyed. <laughs> yeah, no, I I I, but I I think uh, because of because uh, if you don't if you don't count the Sparks Brothers documentary because it's a documentary, uh, Baby Driver and Last in the Soho is probably the movies that he you know, p- p- because people people got to know him as the guy who made the Cornetto movies. And yeah. they're very distinct. Like you said, they, they yes. are their own style. <coughs> and then his Definitely. other movies are a different style. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. I'm glad that I, I've seen more, more, and more, more and more like <laughs> video essays about the movie. Like, hey, remember this movie that, that flopped back in 2010? It's actually amazing. I was like, yeah, I know. Yeah. I didn't have the internet back then, but I could have told you. <laughs> <laughs> I had the internet, but I didn't have... Letterboxd not or, like that yeah, Twitter. <laughs> uh, uh no so I can't uh find my rating of baby Driver. however now he has he has two uh upcoming movies, projects upcoming projects one is the chain I've no idea what that is does it say anything no. uh, a mother finds herself trapped in oh, a terrifying oh. kidnapping chain okay so that's another more serious movie yeah mystery thriller and then the running man 
and it's, it's, isn't there already a movie called The Running Man? The futuristic United States of 2025, <laughs> when the world has become a dystopia. I'm guessing this is yeah Stephen King. It's Stephen based King on the Stephen involved, King yeah. book. So maybe it's not a remake of the movie. It's a new adaptation of the book. Because yeah, yeah, there is probably. an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie from like eighty seven, right? Yeah, eighty four, something like that. Um, eighty seven. Oh, and he has said on Twitter that that is the movie he most wanted to remake. He has never really been a Hollywood guy. There was there was that one time when he was going to make uh, the Ant-Man movie, but then that fell apart, oh, right. thankfully. Thank God. Yeah. So, But, but now he's going to make this? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully the, the change. Oh, it's movie. that one, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the greatest movies of all time. The Running Man. I don't know if I've seen the entire film, actually. I'll be but back. I know which one it is. I was going to say, I'll be back Bennett, but that's another movie. He says, I'll be back to many <laughs> Anyway. Says, I'll be back in, like, everything. Yeah. Anyway, Shot of the Dead. Shot of the Dead. Still, well, yeah. Still, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Honestly, like I said, honestly, probably better this time than I watched it. Yeah. Because I haven't watched it in a while. Because I, as well, not as much as you, obviously, but this was one of those movies that I revisited more often when I was younger. Yeah. I think it kind of ruined it a little bit, but going back now, cause I might have seen it back in 2021 then when we did an episode on it. Yeah. No. Obviously I did. Um, but I haven't watched it since. No, me neither. It's been three years now, so. It was and nice. And it still holds up. Oh, yeah. It holds up so well. I mean, sure. It's a little bit frustrating at certain times but that's the point of it the characters are supposed to be idiots <laughs> yes, annoying yes, yes. <laughs> it's also fun to see uh there's just it's just one scene really um like like all of all of all of britain's like comedy elite at oh, least God, i would yes. say and maybe not the mainstream in one scene together i mean you have um you have oh you mean a, when they meet Yvonne and her gang yeah when the two gangs meet <laughs> And of course, yeah, you have you have um, oh damn, what are all their names? All their Obviously, names. Obviously, Simon Pegg is there. Nick Frost is there. Dylan Moran is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever the girl, Tamsin Grieg, who plays uh, from the other team, from the other gang. Yeah. yeah Tamsin yeah. Grieg is there, or Greg Grieg, whatever. Uh, in, in the back is uh, the one guy from uh, Britain, uh, Little Britain. Little Britain. And then you have uh, uh, what is his name? The Hobbit, Bilbo, yeah, Martin Freeman, <laughs> yes, like, like, uh, and then one guy that maybe not is that the one who plays their version of David with the jacket. Um, he has a small role in Spaced. I mean, he does not, maybe not super known, but looks like ah, it's the guy from Spaced. Yeah, no, I recognized him, but yeah. I can't. He's been in some other stuff as well. Yeah, there's so like like that scene is it's so fun to watch now. It's like, huh. They got all those people in the same movie? <laughs> yeah. Like, you could not put that together tonight, uh, this year. No, no. I mean, they, they did pretty good in getting a lot of the same people involved in uh, making um, World's End, obviously. Yeah, and... and I noticed... Fuss. Yeah, because they had the same... The first zombie they encounter in the backyard in Shaun of the Dead... Mary. Yeah. She was in World's End as well. Um, I just happened to see her face. I was like, hold up, that's the same girl. No, I think so, at least. I'm sure she is, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, in the big zombie scene outside of the Winchester, um, you have... Uh, uh, is his name Michael Smiley, I think? Who, of course, played yeah. Tires, the bike messenger guy. The the techno bike messenger guy in uh, Spaced. Who's then yeah. become famous on his own after that. Was it Mark? Hmm? They're Daffy. Yvonne, Yvonne's posse's Daffy. Is it Mark? Reese uh, Shearsmith? Yes. Yes. I think so. Yeah. 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 And who? who what, what? And of course, from Spaced, uh, Yvonne, uh, Jessica Hines. Yeah. 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 Obviously. Obviously. <sighs> We we should do a TV cast on Spaced. Have you watched Spaced? <laughs> yes, I okay, have. Okay, okay. Have, you watched, have you seen all of it? I think so. Okay. Did you have it on like DVD? Yeah, you? I have. I have it. I have. Uh, you still have it, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Somewhere. I have the the Channel Four Super Nice Three Disc uh, Collector's Edition. Yeah. 
I think I I think I watched that like one one summer or something. Yeah. It's uh it's one of the best uh best comedy shows t- TV shows I would say ever. Yeah. Uh, starring a lot of the same yeah, like I said so a lot of the same people. We do unfortunately have another couple of uh, sport, uh TV casts we need to do, but I'll, I'll talk about you off air with that one yeah. about that one. I'm a bit of a bit of a bit of Yeah, yeah. My, my brain is starting to get foggy. Um, but yeah, Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead, one amazing movie. If you for some reason one haven't seen it, movie. check it out. Check out the whole Cornetto yes. trilogy. Check out Spaced. Yes. Uh, yeah. Check it. It's kind of fun to watch all three of them in like succession, because then you notice details and stuff yeah. more. <laughs> it just There's a lot of fun. lot of yeah, a lot of Easter eggs. Yes. Oh, you forgot Peter Serafinowicz, of course. Oh yeah, of course. <gasps> oh, oh my god. He he has the best line in the movie. When he's the, he's complaining that eh, we can't keep living like this. We're not in school anymore. We look at the state of it. Uh and then he says it's all Ed's fault, it's Nick Frost's fault. I was like, come on, I like having you around, it's a laugh. So like, yeah, yeah. There was actually that one time, you know, when we stayed up all night playing Tekken. No, drinking apple schnapps playing Tekken too. And he's like, yeah. When was that? That was five years ago. Once again. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and with that, that deadpan deep voice he has, it's so good. Yeah. It was five years ago. When is he going home? <laughs> Just come on. It's so good. Oh. Anyway. We did have other, had other... I can't speak today. We did have other stuff we were going to talk about. Yes. So we're not going to spend too much on this. And we just want to say happy birthday, Sean of the Dead. Yes. Thank you so much to Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, Nick Frost, and everyone else gang. involved. Yeah, <laughs> for making one of the greatest movies of all time. But now we have to move on uh, to more yes. uh, sad stuff. Well, both good and sad. bad. And some sad. Yeah. Uh, we have a f- Where do you want to start? <laughs> I think we'll start with some of the trailers we watched. Just, sure. Just endlessly discuss and and uh, whatever they do on all those nerd channels. <laughs> what were the trailers? Well, we had we were talking about Joker. Right. Uh, the new one. For, have a, a, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Folie, I used to French deux. for fucking seven years. <laughs> yeah, it's folie a deux. Folie a deux. Yeah. I. Yeah, what do you think? Now we've seen a proper I trailer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't see the point in having a sequel. First of all, no. Really. I mean, that's always like, why are you making a sequel? It, yeah. Is it? Do you feel like you have more to say about the character, or is it just, re- you know, feel cashing like in on a billion dollar movie? I I I got the feeling that they we're not going to explore much more about the character. Um. Of well, whatever his name was. Arthur Fleck. Flick, right. I feel we're gonna get more of an introduction to than Lady Gaga's character. Cause they start off by talking about music, and he never really talked about music in the first movie, no, did he? No, but he was he was he was dancing. He liked sure. dancing. But then they chose an a singer. Yeah, cause a songwriter it, to play Well well the the first one was more of a dance movie, if you will, there's gonna be more of a music movie. It's just a different yeah, I theme. I, I'm fine with that, um, unless it is, like they say, a full-on musical, because then I'm going to hate it. Which the trailer kind of looks like. Without but there's no singing in the trailer, in it. though. No, exactly. So, I don't know. But certain shots look like they're from a musical. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm fine if there's musical numbers, obviously, because they're going to be like fantasies in his head. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. I just don't. I just hope it's not... Uh, purely a musical. Purely a musical, yeah. Um... It looks good. I can see where they're going with the character that, you know, he was he was just starting to find himself, you know, be happy in the end of the first one, but then, you know, he got stuck again in the mental mental asylum. Yeah. But then he finds uh, you know, a kindred spirit, someone who's like him. And like he says in the trailer, yeah. like for the first time something he says like I'm someone understands me or I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not alone ex- anymore. Exactly. Like, oh, okay, I get it. So yeah, I am sure. I am cautiously optimistic. I mean it doesn't look bad, I just don't really see the point of it. No. 
they uh, they have some cool visuals definitely and, and the final scene in the trailer is is very cool how they match up the smile and stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah. people people are going crazy with that shot on twitter of course they are it's twitter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh my god do you know how much work you know with uh, you know uh, blocking and timing to just set that uh, that shot up uh, that that scene alone should make it the greatest move of all time. So calm down. You, ju- you just you just you just rehearse it and block it out. It took them an hour to shoot that scene. Calm down. Exactly. <laughs> it's not that much. Like sure, it's it's good, but no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people are upset that they're changing the backstory of Harley Quinn or Harleen Quinzel. Oh, that she's not uh, his psychologist is, or whatever. I mean, they have said though that she does play. Harley it does say. Harley on the, the but background the, thingy when they have like their talk show or whatever it looks but like. But then once again, it wasn't like they were being super uh, uh, faithful to the origin story of the Joker in The Joker. Like, no, he's he still Batman's hasn't fallen into brother, the... if we're to believe his mom, of course. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, like, they're just making their own version. They're just taking the characters. They're not doing the uh, the. the a remake of the comic book or whatever. Yeah. And like Arthur Fleck, that's not the Joker. That no, that's the big just... that's the biggest problem with that movie that it's now forever tied to the comic books. Yeah. Cuz it's so wants to be to its own it thing. But they could have just called it something else really and maybe changed up the the clown makeup a little but bit. But then it wouldn't have made a billion dollars. You I know, I thing. know, I know. Brand name recognition and all that shit as usual. Yeah. Were, and it actually worked here. People went and saw a weird uh, incel terrorist movie, which they, sure. which they never would have gone to see otherwise. But because it says Joker, <clears throat> no. and they're like, "Huh, I have to watch this now." Is it is it related to uh, this Batman or that Batman oh, yeah. or any Batman? Is this is this maybe part of the Batman now? Or because I mean, Joker, the Batman. Oh, shut up. Yeah, it should have been called two it, different universes. It should have been called Arthur. It's just a movie. Stop exactly. It. If you changed, didn't call it Arthur and changed up the clown makeup, you wouldn't even change the clown. Makeup. He doesn't look. No, like probably that not. Because no, that's true. It's just a movie about a clown what? guy. Then people say, yeah, "Oh, this is yeah. obviously uh, just aping off uh, the Joker." <sighs> you can't win. You can't win. No, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I see it. I, obviously, <laughs> yeah. When I first heard about the the movie, like they're making a sequel, I was like, "No." And then I saw there was some people who had filmed, you know, when they were out in the streets shooting. Uh, yeah. You, how, did you watch those, like, cell phone videos people took of him running down I the street? I think I saw, like, one or two, okay. yeah. Where they have, like, people in clown makeup uh, chasing him. Mm-hmm. It's it's in the trailer as well. Yeah, and it's like that. one of those one shots where people see people popping in and out. Sort of like the dance scene in Last Night in Soho, yeah. where they're physically popping in and out of the scene. Yeah. It's cool. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, and I was like, okay, that's, I don't know, we just couldn't really make anything out of that. But then having seen the trailer, I'm excited. Sure. I'm not sure it's going to be good, but I am going to go see it, definitely. Yeah. <sighs> now a movie I am excited about, though, which I didn't think I would be. Yeah. But now I am. Is uh, Maxine. You weren't excited for that? Are you kidding me? Not Super. Um, cause I was, I was a little, like, I, I didn't really understand what they were trying to do with it. Uh, like, me neither. I had no idea what the point was. Pearl and, and, uh, uh, what's the other one called? Maxine. Oh, the movie, X. X, yeah. right, X. So the character's <laughs> Maxine. <laughs> no, 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 the movie. Okay, yeah, yeah, X, yeah. Cause I was a little bit like, I'm not sure what, how are they going to continue off of those two into what I've heard Maxine was going to be. But looking at the trailer, yeah. it looks very interesting. Yes. Well, the point the point is to show like 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 uh how Maxine how Maxine got her big break. Yeah. After after what happened, you know, she's still like, "Well, I don't care. I'm a star," which like Yeah. And and, and because Pearl sees so much of herself in Maxine and then we got the Pearl origin story. Like, obviously, yeah. something's wrong with Maxine, you know? Uh. <laughs> so that, that, that's, that's, a, that's the, where that, they were that's going with it. Yeah. going to be interesting to explore, then. What exactly is wrong with her? Yeah. Because they, they point out that we have the... the is it the Nightcrawler? Yes. 
Yeah, say the night. Something call, right? Ramirez. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I gotta say though, mainly because of the music and it's set in the eighties and Ramirez is it Edgar Ramirez? I don't remember. Whatever the night, the remember. night crawler, night stalker. Um, night stalker. Right? It felt a lot uh, like a trailer for a new season of American Horror Story, and specifically yeah, season just... was it nine? Yeah, 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 yeah. but that's slasher. just because we associate that one. Yeah, with because that was also eighties. There's this girl with a mysterious past, and the Night Stalker was involved, or Nightcrawler, or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, is this... Is this American Horror Story? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but then it was obviously like, oh, wait, this looks much better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some really great shots in it. Uh, and yeah, I... Uh, like, like we said when we first saw X, I thought it was good. Uh, mm. A little bit overhyped. But then, was it the year after, I think, uh, when we saw Pearl, I was like, yeah. oh, now I get it. That's why Ty West won for Best Director for both those movies. No, it was the same yeah. year then. It was the same year. Technically. Yeah. I think, yeah. No. Um, then it all made sense. It was like, those movies need to be watched together. Because together, they're yes. like, oh my god. So yeah, I I am super excited for this trilogy ender for Maxine, the X trilogy, the triple X trilogy. Yeah, I'm hoping it is it is the ending. So it they is. don't like continue because this it it feels a little bit detached from from the first two movies, but I think it's because it takes place in a very different location. Well, That's I, I think why. just watching the the poster or the trailer, Pearl felt detached as well. Because it was like sure, a, but it was like a Technicolor like musical fifties uh, nightmare, while yeah, X but at least was you a had sleazy seventies like a grindhouse movie, which this is coming to be closer to. So it's it's a perfect they're blending over yeah. This in is between with, this with is X. it's the eighties. Some of the visuals obviously like Jalo inspired, like Italian or yeah. horror, you know, not slasher, but Italian like yeah, killer yeah. movies. Uh, but also a little bit slasher, obviously. Yes. Because there's someone Which chasing her. So excited oh, about. Yeah. I, uh, s- we talked, someone, all oh, right, people are saying like, oh, we already had the best uh, best horror movie of the year with uh, the first Omen. People are like, that might be my favorite horror movie of the year. I was like, bruh, Maxine is coming out this year. <laughs> are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, like so far, I haven't seen a better horror movie this year, but it's because I haven't seen that many horror. Yeah, movies. so far, that yeah, many horror movies. The yet. First Omen is the best one, but uh, sure. Uh, but we know it's gonna be. <laughs> I have, I have Outperformed. full confidence in Ty West. Uh, oh yeah. After after Pearl and X, it was a little rocky there before that. I mean, he we talked about it. He made a lot of good movies, but he also made some. I mean, he made uh, uh what's it called? Cabin Fever 2, uh, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he himself is not very happy with that one because it got taken away from him. So I guess it's not fully his sure. fault. But that movie, whoa. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, I'm super excited for that one. The trailer was great. Yeah. Uh, uh, There's something about Mia Goth. I, I don't, I don't like, I forget about her. Cause she's, but then whenever I see her on screen, I'm like, She's mesmerizing yeah. somehow. Well, she's she is um, she's uh, she's not she doesn't look like an like a Hollywood superstar. No, she's not she, conventionally she's, yeah, she's pretty in that sense. Conventionally beautiful, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also just. But then there's also this this attitude, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Specifically, as Maxine. Yes. I mean, she's she's quirky in general. But as Maxine, it's like, I don't know, intoxicating almost. <laughs> also, have you watched interviews with her? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Like, I did around uh, Pearl, I did. Yeah, like comparing... But that's when she's a bit quirky. She's a bit Yeah, but that's, she feels more... Uh, I don't want it to sound so cliche, but down to earth. It's a wrong thing to say, but she feels more... Laid back, laid, I would say. Yeah. Uh, then if you... Speaking of Last Night in Soho, uh, like Anya Taylor-Joy... In interviews, oh, yeah, no. wow! Someone pointed that out a while ago. That you know, she looks like she she looks like a like a rich kid. 
Anna Taylor Joy. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, she's the tip, she's archetypical she's, uh, rich kid. She's rich, like almost royalty like yeah. in the way she acts and, and I mean she's very professional in that sense yeah, she's a very good actress but yeah like yeah. in interviews I'm like yeah she's so poised she's just like she's up there somewhere I can't I can't relate to her she's like an old school movie star you know yeah people don't act like that anymore but she's like I couldn't I couldn't she's fascinating as well to be honest yeah sure <laughs> and even which is so weird I've only seen like mini clips of her and, and uh, Chris Hemsworth um, promoting the, the Furiosa movie mm. And she's so, she's so like above him <laughs> without even trying. But I think it, it also comes with her being like, she, she speaks like five languages. She's uh, like super talented and everything. So she could just dominate the space without even trying. Yeah. And he's just standing like, oh, good movie in Spanish. Like, <coughs> she speaks Spanish for some reason. I don't remember if she's like half Spanish or something. Something like that. Yeah, no. she's something. She's mixed, but she speaks so many languages. And she, oh, I dropped my phone. They're two different. She, her and Mia Goth are two different like ends of the spectrum of of how to draw an audience. I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. Because Mia Goth is this quirky, laid back kind of quiet version, while Undertale Joy is just Regal. up there. Yeah. <laughs> Without being rude, obviously. She's not rude. No. She just seems very professional, yeah, in a way. Yeah. And then also, I don't know if this is a bad take, but I think, um, uh, cause she's, uh, Who? uh, uh, Mia Goff. Mia Goff? Yeah. Um, she, she, when, when all the, the, the stuff went down with Shia LaBeouf, uh, yeah. A few years ago, she was the only one who like stood by him, and you know stuck with him. And I yeah. think they they didn't have a kid, but they have like they have a kid together now. And she's when you when when you when they talk about him, she's like, totally devoted to him as well as you know as well as her career, which is that's also very very yeah. admirable. That that adds to it as a person, you know. According to IMDb, they're still technically married, but they have filed for divorce. Oh, no. But I, it's like someone hasn't signed the papers or something. Because <laughs> I think we read that when we talked about Pearl as well. Oh, I think so, yeah. But there's that interview he did for some podcast. The the the, the Shane from Walking Dead podcast. I don't remember what it's called. It's called Real Talk or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when when Charlotte Ruff talks about it. It's just like, ah, that's nice. It's yeah. admirable. Not that it has anything to do with her acting, but still. No, but it it uh, it um, it adds to the the personality, and we we attach the person to the the movies, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Both born in ninety. No. Mia Goth is born in ninety three. Anya Taylor Joy in ninety six. I thought they were about the same yeah. age. Yeah, kind of the same age. That's the weirdest thing about growing older. Like, when you watch like famous movie people now, and they're like. 10 years younger than you it's like oh <laughs> uh. well these aren't these are my age oh, there you are. yeah so, but you know what I mean yeah uh, I was like what these are supposed to be children what is, what is happening <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh right I'm, I'm I'm halfway to 70 that's one way of looking at it yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> well I am this year anyway there's one more trailer I sent you oh I told you to look at one trailer yeah one well technically that? two more trailers then one that I had no idea of, which is a movie called Cuckoo. Oh, yeah. I, I, I stumbled upon it yeah. when I was looking at tra- these trailers specifically I'm on IMDb. S- that one like, came next or something. Yeah, and I'm so glad you did. Yeah. So I gotta say, that was the scariest trailer. Not if we don't count Vermin or uh, Infested. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. that's more of a, ah, I don't like spiders. That's- exactly. But on a more like horror movie thing, you know. Yeah. This is the scariest trailer I have seen since like 2006, 2005, when the first trailer for The Strangers came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, That yeah. trailer made me literally scream when this scene <laughs> when she's just standing in the, in the room and he just steps out of the shadow yeah. and he holds on it for like <gasps> 10, 20 seconds in the middle of the trailer. And you're like, just put on it. Uh, it is, uh, I don't know what to say in English, it's Gast Kramander. Haunting, oh, uh, I suppose. 
yeah, like uh, gut wrenching. Is that a no, way of saying not it? Really. No. Either way. Either way, the scene here. This is also when she's biking uh, it's home body at night, horror, right? Yeah, oh yeah. And you just glimpse someone running next to her, and then the shadow. Yeah, the, yeah in like in like between the houses uh, or something, and then her shadow. Uh, oh my God. I was just, it's supposed to be a body horror movie as which, well. Hey, bring which it you on. like. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Oh, yeah. That looks like... I mean, we just said, like, hey, Maxine's going to be the best horror movie of the year. Well, we haven't seen well, Cuckoo yet. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, no. That looks fucking amazing. And Dan Stevens? You have, like... Oh. Yeah. Uh, ooh. I love that. That he's, he's such a... I mean... He he's played the good-looking guy as well. He's yes. on some British TV show where he plays the regular good-looking guy. I don't remember. Um, but then he just <laughs> makes these weird, violent horror movies as well. Um, have you seen the guest he made many years ago? Now, like ten years ago, I think it's called the guest. Oh, yeah, the guest. Um, where where they even they even use the fact that he's really good-looking to like. Mask the the you know his, his the 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 scary part the with horrors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wait, he was in. Wait, am I confusing the rental with something else? The rental. No, the Dave Franco movie. Yeah, he's the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once again, picks a really really scary horror movie. That movie's really scary. Yeah. Um, like the guest, and he um. Uh, yeah, he just picks... Ah, that one. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it, but I know which one it is. It's a good movie. If you don't know the yeah. twist or whatever, you watch that movie. Wow. What a great movie. <laughs> All right. He plays the Beast in Beauty and the Beast. So, obviously, like, he's done the conventional good-looking guy as well, obviously. Yeah. But he's just some... Here and there, he just picks really <laughs> weird, uh, like offbeat horror movie so I'm, I'm glad to see him once again doing that in Cuckoo because he's so good in horror movies oh yeah so yeah I'm I'm. that's another movie I'm, I am I, I have no idea what it's about I've, I've only seen the trailer I haven't looked up anything else about it I'm actually gonna I'm gonna I'm deviate for the first time now exclusive uh, no, it doesn't guys, say much exclusive <laughs> I'm I'm no, the, the... Cuckoo for the first time I mean if you just read the oh, shit. the description a... it's nothing Oh yes, because it's it's uh, it's on in festivals right now. Ah, okay. So it's premiering officially summer or end of summer, uh, in most countries. Hmm. It seems. Fifty-eight meta score. That that's 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 not good. Yeah, but yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's see who doesn't <laughs> like it. It's. And let's. See. It's been on Berlin International Film Festival, uh, South by Southwest Film Festival, uh, Overlook Festival just recently. And uh, tomorrow it's on the TIFF. The TIFF. So Toronto International Film wave. Festival. Yeah. So maybe it'll up after that. And then it'll premiere July and August in most countries, it seems. Even though we don't have that many in the list. Let's see. The worst has got, it says, exuding more uncertainty than discipline. Okay. This wackadoo horror thriller from German writer-director Tillman Singer can't decide if wearing a smirk will see it through a sloppily developed plot which keeps promising more than it delivers. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's called Cuckoo, so wackadoo seems fitting yeah, somehow. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be like unhinged. <laughs> yeah. The- I mean, the trailer as well. Just, is she going crazy or is everyone else crazy? Yeah. Is she cuckoo or is everyone else cuckoo? <laughs> One may wish that the absurdity of the conceit had been matched by a bit more irreverence in the script and audacity in the imagery. Okay. If I'm being honest, half of those words just sound like <laughs> words right now. <laughs> that just sound like I'm gonna put strange, big, yeah. uh, weird words in my text to sound more um, educated yeah. and. Difficult, I guess, or just, you know, like I'm better than everyone else. Here's a good one from Time Out, I guess, magazine. Sure to be a cult classic. It's quite literally cuckoo and often gloriously so. Isn't that the point? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably. You know what? I'm excited for I'm that I'm very excited for that one. And <sighs> then one that I'm less excited for. Uh, you, yes. You, I had heard m- rumors about it, didn't think it was going to happen. But Blumhouse, which we're going to talk about more in a little bit, motherfuckers, yes. <laughs> um, 
are releasing a an I guess American remake of Speak No Evil, which is just like which was originally a no Danish. Danish what was it? I guess Danish. it's a Danish production, but it's a Danish uh, Dutch co-production right, or something. Right, right, because it's yeah. a, it's a Dutch family and a Danish family, right? Yeah, I think it's technically a Danish movie, but yeah, yeah, um, sure. And 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 I watched because I never saw the trailer for the original. I just saw the movie because I heard people saying like, "Ooh, it's one of the better thrillers of the year." And I watched it. And I was like, "Yeah, I've, I've talked about it. Have you seen it yet?" No, I haven't, and I haven't watched the trailer from the American version yet. Oh, I've only seen like the first thirty seconds or something. You know what? Don't watch it Don't. because I watched. <laughs> yeah, I watched the watch trailer the after instead. watching this one, and it reveals a lot more. The original oh. trailer does not spoil, but kind of like give away some things. The I mean, you've talked about it very sparingly, so I know a little bit. Yeah. You need. But I don't know all the you twists. need to watch it because th- I know it's obvious. that is. We talked last week about what makes a movie scary. That yeah. is a properly terrifying movie without having jump yes. scares or monsters or anything. Yes. It is. It is disgusting. <clears throat> it is some yeah. of the worst shit I've ever seen, and I love it. Yeah. I hate that the trailer. Is very similar, uh, not the trailer. The poster is uh, um, almost too similar, in my opinion, uh, with the the font and just so the simplicity of it. Because it's like they couldn't even think of a, a their own like tra- poster for it. They're like, no, we just you know. Well, I gotta see the I don't, I don't know. for the uh, American not, movie, American version. Yeah, it's just. But it's it's much darker. But there's this texture to it that makes me think of the um, the, uh, the Dutch one, Danish one. Because the 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 Danish one is like the road, or like a car. It's a car, and then you have like a, a sunset or something. Yeah. So there's oh. the orange at the bottom, and then the blue. I picked. Them. But it's just it's very minimalistic because you only have the car at the bottom. Other than that, it's just color basically. The American one is just black, but then there's this texture to it that looks like they're trying to mimic the car, in my opinion. It's annoying, and it's the same font basically. They just changed the no. But there's it's Come just on. text. I don't see it. it's just a black background. There's texture. Yeah, to but it. what is those? Is that a, what do you mean? It looks like a car. They're trying to make it as min- minimalistic as as the the Danish one. Oh, okay. I don't like it. It is directed by James Watkins. It's also too soon. Speak No Evil came out twenty twenty two. Yeah, but it's one of those movies like. Uh, Kind of like in the 60s when Swedish pop artists would just take American songs and remake them. Sure. Because sure. like, whoa, Sw- Swedish people don't know English. We'll just make a Swedish version of it. And there's like, yeah. ah, uh, Americans can't watch Americans a movie with, <laughs> with subtitles, even though like 80% of it is in English. Because they don't speak the same exactly. language. Yeah. So we'll just make an American version of it. It's like, no. Just show the original. I promise you, they can understand. They can read a little bit of subtitles. Yeah. Uh, it it and it also good actors though. Yeah, great actors. Uh, I mean, I'm always happy to see Scoot McNary in movies. But uh, and James McAvoy, of course, and uh, is it Lily yeah. Jones? No, what's her name? No, it's uh, Mackenzie Davis. Yeah, yeah, but the other one. Oh, um. Or maybe I'm. Just... Not listed. There's a child listed, but then we, we, they haven't listed everyone. No, yet. that's true. Yeah. All right, whatever. <coughs> but yeah, Mackenzie it Davis. He yeah. hasn't premiered, but yep. But it's the idea then that an American family goes to England? Or like Scotland? James McAvoy I think is so, yeah. Scottish, right? Mackenzie Davis is British as well, isn't she? No, she's like yeah. There's, it's an Eng- it's a it's an English versus American. That's all I understood. Canadian. But it looks like they met in like Italy or something. Yeah, and that's the that's the original movie. They meet at a okay, at a, fine, at a vacation. Yeah. You know, they're in okay, yeah. yeah and then they invite Greece them over to their house. Yeah. Either way, speaking of Blumhouse, then, yes. Let's move on to the last last little bit we had that we wanted to talk let's about. See if I can find the article. I want to read the exact article. One eternity later, I found it. I just I just googled. Well, it's not it's not the same article. 
No. But here's another one. We can read both of them. But send the this one you have. It should be the same. It's by John Squires. Yeah. Bloody disgusting. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Speaking of Blumhouse remaking movies. Yeah. All the time. And I mean, we've, we've, we've already talked about, we talked extensively about Blumhouse here a few weeks ago. Yeah. And we talked about uh, Imaginary and uh, uh, Fantasy Island on, um, on the Patreon episode. Uh, there were some clips, of course. Yeah. Hey, did you know we released clips of all our episodes? Even the, the, <laughs> Have, the you ones? <laughs> yeah, Have you noticed? Have you noticed? I release more clips than actual episodes nowadays. But not on the clips channel, because I don't dare to start another channel. Uh, that's I should try it, though. Either way. Um, yeah, we don't like... We like Blumhouse, because yes. they do take chances here and there. But then they do dumb shit like Fantasy Island or Imaginary, or like this. Should I read it or you read it? Go for it. Blumhouse and Lionsgate join forces for brand new The Blair Witch Project movie. Uh, 25 years, which also costs celebration. Hey, congratulations, uh, Blair Witch Project. Right. One of the greatest movies of all time. 25 years. Sorry this is happening to you. <laughs> 25 years after the release of the original genre-changing classic. Uh, Lionsgate and Blumhouse announced out of CinemaCon today that they will partner on the development and production of a new Blair Witch Project movie as the first film in a multi-picture pact with Blumhouse reimagining horror classics from the Lionsgate library. What yes. the fuck? Luckily, I can't think of a single Lionsgate movie <laughs> off the top of my head. So I might uh, be surprised when I see the list eventually. Oh, yeah, they don't mention any here. No. Uh, but here's what they it says. They just talk about things that Blumhouse have been involved in to, like, set set a certain standard in, in the horror space, which is true, <sighs> like we said. Yeah, but the announcement came by Adam Fogelson, uh, chair, uh, chair, Lionsgate Motion Picture Group, and Jason Blum. We know yeah, Jason yeah, Blum. But- Based at Universal, <laughs> where it has a first-look deal, Blumhouse is the gold star. Yikes. Blumhouse is the gold standard in the horror space? That's not... That's a bit excessive. Uh, that's yeah. not the gold G- standard. Genera- generating blockbuster results from a string of modestly budgeted films, including the Paranormal Activity franchise. Yeah. Insidious. Good. The Purge. First one was First okay. One. Sinister. The Halloween movies. The new ones. Which they, by the way, are reimagining again. Do you know, as a TV show... Oh, God. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta read that, because it's the worst. They're running out of ways to say remake or reboot. They're calling it something else. They're calling it a... uh, What the fuck was it? Uh, It was the dumbest thing ever. Here. Uh, Oh, no! They don't have the word here. Now, it was a thing I saw on, on Twitter was a while ago where they were calling it like a... Um, oh, damn it. We're in a fast track. Uh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> here, here. It's a quote. Um, it's a creative reset. What the fuck <laughs> does that mean? A creative means, reset? Oh, you mean to make it again? It means inspired by, um, and then like, kind of like still, uh, I guess, accepting that the original exists, but uh, we're doing it our own thing. I don't know. I have no. No, it's just stupid. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a creative reset completely, and going back to the original film as opposed to spinning out of any of the more recent film adaptations. Yeah. So they were like, "Oh, we had a we had a big success with the 2018 Halloween reboot or yeah. or a requel, sequel, whatever it's called, legacy sequel." Whatever, yeah, whatever. Um it was a legacy it was supposed to be Sure. Sh- sure. Yeah, this is the real sequel to the original. Ignore all the other ones. Yeah. Uh, which they already done like 10 times before that. <laughs> Um, with number four and number Which is why I'm not a super big fan of that seven. franchise because it's yeah. so muddy. Um, so and then and then they made uh, the second, which terrible Halloween kills, yeah. and then the third one, Halloween ends with which 
had potential. Bad Halloween movie, but a good horror movie. I would exactly. say. I've <laughs> had come potential around on that in one. That sense. It had potential, yeah. Um, but then it's like, oh no, we killed Michael Myers. Like, now we what can't we make now? any more money. Uh, creative reset. And we'll go back to the original. It's like, but you already did that three movies ago. Because the funny thing is, as opposed to spinning out of any of the more recent film adaptations, you're just doing what they did in the 80s. You're just yeah. rebooting it to make more money. It's such bullshit. <sighs> anyway, back to Blumhouse ruining Blair Witch Project. <laughs> um, See, the thing is, as much as I hate remakes and, and uh, legacy sequels and all the fucking words for it, Blumhouse has been able to produce good movies, good horror movies. Yeah, but not good remakes. <coughs> no, no, I know. And the Blair Witch Project is iconic. You can't really... You can't really remake that one without being, like, blatantly just, yeah, this is the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. You know what happens. Like, they're not going to be able to throw in a new twist there, really. And, I mean, they they already tried... They, they, they did it in 2016 with Blair Witch. Right, And it was yeah. awful. Yeah. I am still excited because we haven't had what? that. No. no, 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 wait. We hadn't haven't had that kind of horror film yet in a while. But it's With not the, gonna the be the found footage stuff. It's not gonna. There's plenty of found footage movies, which there. are good. Uh, <laughs> there are plenty of good found footage. Recently, movies. recently, yes. Name one. Oh, uh, Deadstream. Check out Deadstream. Check out Dashcam. Check out uh fuck. Check out um. Uh, oh fuck! I can. But I aren't can... they like from like a web camera or like a car? They're not like kids running around with woods yeah, with but... handhelds. No, yeah, because kids don't run around the woods with handhelds anymore, Rebecca. It's 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 found footage uh, yes. for our time. Yes. Which is I which mean, is GoPros? what Blair Witch was, <laughs> or the Blair Witch Project was. Huh? Which then GoPros, but that was the twenty um, was it sixteen version. <sighs> yeah. Exactly. Um, hold on. I'm... There is a. I want to shout out a, 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 um, a YouTube channel here. Um, it's a smaller channel, a bigger than us, of course, but a smaller channel. Yeah. But she she and she does a lot of horror movie stuff, and she recently did a, a, um, a found footage list. She talked about the 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 genre in a video, and then she made like a, a best best of list. Of course, you have possessed by horror has made her own. Yeah. We all know she's. She's pretty big. That channel's pretty big. But then there is... Um... Oh, no. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing in this episode. Because <laughs> now I have to find her, of course. Uh, hold Look on. Look at your I'm, history. I'm... Searching your no, history. No, it's been a while. I don't, watch... I don't watch her all the time. I am subscribed, but I don't watch all the time. What is her name? It's something horror something. All webs and lions game? Huh? Cobweb? No. Yeah. No. Oh, it comes up as a Lionsgate movie. What? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we can tee every point. Ethno, en timme, nio. Så efter första timmen måste jag börja lyssna så jag kan ja. klippa. För första timmen, timmes marker, det första där din mikrofon ramar ner i stort sett. Ah, here we go. Uh, the channel is called What the Horror. Um, and she had a uh, video here. A couple of weeks ago, she made a video called Evolution of Found Footage. Now I don't want to. I don't want to critique too much because I just want to do a shout out. But you know, <laughs> I, I disagreed a little bit with her. Uh, uh, evolution slash origin of found footage, but you know sure. she did she did bring up stuff like cannibal holocaust and stuff like that, but still. But then she did a, a, a list call or a video called the ultimate found footage watch list twenty five films, where she brought up a lot of good ones, uh, some that I didn't agree with, but you know it's whatever. <coughs> Trying to get into a nice even number of twenty five, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh no, she doesn't have the actual list in the. Damn it. I, I found the Lionsgate horror movie list and I am slightly concerned now because I realized that um, Lionsgate was involved in producing um, The Grudge. Ew, the 2021? 
the 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 no, the oh, 2002. The... Oh, Lionsgate. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Juan the Grudge. The, the yeah. Early 2000s. I I don't want them to remake that one. <laughs> they already have. Yeah, but I don't want I don't want it to happen again. <laughs> they already made a 2004 and 2020 version of that movie. <laughs> There's a 2020 version of that movie? Yeah. Yeah, it came and went because it was awful from what I heard. I never watched it. Because that's like my the one I grew up with. Probably the 2004 version, though. The American version. Yeah. yeah. I did see the, 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 the original as well. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 2019, The Grudge. 2019, sorry, yeah. Anyway. Uh, ah, the visuals still kind of freak me out, though, with the yeah, yeah, hand sure, sure. and the head. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. Anyway, you should check out uh, you should check out that video because it was a, a pretty good list, and also I left a comment which she liked, so you know you know I, it was a good comment where I I gave and then it's, it's another one, it's you know it's modern found footage. Yes, it's a lot of webcam vid, uh, movies, but the Den from twenty thirteen, great uh, webcam horror movie. Um, you have seen the Poughkeepsie tapes, right? Which is uh, more of a yeah we've talked mockumentary about that, though, but there's a lot of yes. fa- I mean it's literally. The cops find footage of the murders. Sure, so. sure. Uh, but you know what I mean when I said I want I know that what you kind mean. of. I know what you mean. Um, but then, uh, believe it or not, you remember the the Facebook movie Unfriended, the where the kids hang out on like no the Skype movie. It was like yeah. the first Skype movie where a bunch of kids are hanging out on Skype and then the ghost of their dead friend turns up in the. I chat never watched it. Starts forcing them to kill each other. It's a pretty bad movie, but hey, it keeps you engaged for 90 minutes, which you didn't think it would. They made a sequel to that called Unfriended Dark Web, which is right. le- legitimately kind of good. Because <laughs> um, then the plot is a bunch of friends hang out. Their like, struggling artist friend has a new computer. Like, oh, he has a new nice yeah, uh, yeah. like MacBook. And he's like, oh, where'd you get that? And he's like, Full honesty, I found it at a coffee shop. And they're like, whoa, so you stole it? But no, the guy left. I just took it. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then and then they start getting messages like, hey, you have my computer. I want it back. He's like, well, whatever. But no, 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 yeah. I want it back. Or things going to happen to you? Because it's like, is there something on the computer? And then they start finding things, and things start happening sure. to them. It's actually really good. I mean, actually sure. really kind of good. <laughs> sure. And like I said, dash cam. Uh, what was the other one I mentioned? Uh, Deadstream. Deadstream also is kind of funny because it's almost like a horror comedy movie, which is which is also very very of its time. It came out like a f- couple of years ago. And it's about a YouTuber that has kind of been cancelled. Well, it's not a YouTuber. He's a streamer. They don't want to mention YouTube because it's expensive. Sure. But so, so now he's streaming. And like, yeah, hey, hey, guys. I'm so happy you're here. And then halfway through the thing, like, I got to keep streaming. So, it's all I have <laughs> left. Don't leave me. Do you- <laughs> it's really good, actually. Um, so check that out. Check, and like I said, check out what the horrors list of... of uh, she mentioned a few that I haven't seen. Like... Um, like a, like a Death House or something, which is the whole trilogy now, which a lot of people are like, yeah, that movie's great. Thanks for mentioning it. So, okay. So, yeah, there are, there are, there are good sure. ones still. Sure, sure. So they don't have to remake The Blair Witch Project. No, no, they can God, make other no, things. no. They could re-release it for all I care. Yes. Like, I saw someone, I don't know if it was on Twitter or it was a comment somewhere, it was like, oh, yeah, it would be a great way to, like, um, like int- this 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 remake is a great way to introduce the franchise to a younger audience. I was like, first of all, motherfucker, <laughs> show the original. Yeah, oh, yes. it's outdated, but I mean, kids nowadays know what a video camera is. Yeah, they and can, specifically, they can, like, watch this as something retro. Then yeah, they can they can still comprehend what a video camera is. Yeah. Um, Hell, it's coming back in style, so... (laughs) Yeah, second of all, do not call it a franchise. No. I know that there are comic books and fake documentaries and uh, And video games and sequels. First of all, the sequels are awful. Yes. Uh, That's why we don't talk about them. Yes. Um, (laughs) And and all the the, documentaries and books and stuff, that was like... 
that was not made. To, it was not made to cash in on the the movie. It was made to uh, like deepen the lore. It's 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 one of those like uh, expanded worlds. Oh, uh, what do you call it? World buildings that I yeah. actually enjoy because it's it's respectful of the original and it actually adds something without being just oh more. So the the sticks and stones there. I mean, there's even like fan made documentaries that fit so well within the uh, the bigger picture, like sticks and stones, and the uh, uh, Burkittsville Seven, and of course the original the the original Sci Fi Channel like behind the the movie uh, documentary. Yeah. Um, great stuff, but it was it was just made to to like make the f- movie feel more real. Yeah. But then, yeah, we had the terrible uh, sequel, which came like a year after. Cool I'm idea. I'm trying to find the didn't the work at all. all of it because I'm I'm confused as to what movies are actually Lionsgate horror films because I didn't find all of it. The, the 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 Google list I found was not um complete because it didn't have, for example, the Blair Witch Project on it. Um, uh, so I'm like, what? Yes, I, what I is... don't think that was um. I don't think it was a Lionsgate movie from the beginning. I think they just oh, own maybe, the rights Maybe now. that's why. But like when you Google it, I, I for some reason see that the descent might yeah. be. Yeah. Isn't that the one where they go spelunking? <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh no, don't remake that one. <laughs> again, watch the original. Oh, that's one of those movies I haven't been able to watch again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's on Wikipedia. But we can, I'm, like, I'm checking like 2010 and forward because they're not gonna do. They're not gonna remake Faust. No, probably uh, not. <laughs> uh, what do we have? Like, I, mean, I mean, Saw. They could. They could yeah, remake Saw again. <laughs> they could again. Yeah, exactly. Um, they could. I guess they, that wasn't really a hit though. But they could remake The Last Exorcism and call it the the Last Exorcism again. <laughs> What else? Uh, fucking uh, buried, the the, yeah. the Deadpool guy, whatever his name is. <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. His name is. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> He's just Deadpool now. No, all his characters are just Ryan Reynolds. That's what it is. Yeah, that's the one. Um, what else? Well, they're I don't like, know. I mean, hostel I see, cabin I, in the woods. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I see Texas Chainsaw 3D on here. Yeah. So I don't, I don't I don't know if they have the rights to take the to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh <laughs> Leprechaun Origins. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh There we go. Uh, yeah, Blair Witch. Postman Pat the movie? No, I don't think they're <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh yeah, they made a, they made a lot of movies. A lot of yeah, that's a lot of true, that's movies. True. Um so yeah, that's going to be it's going to be terrible. Oh, they made Alone that 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 zombie movie that I've tried to get oh. you to watch because I want to talk about it, but I don't know how to talk about it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just stuff like that that they can now remake. Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, I'm not excited about that in that sense. I want more... I want more of the early 2000s horror film style to come back, definitely, but not in remakes. No. I want it in actual movies, in, in new movies. Oh, they're definitely going to make a... Because now I saw they made the uh, Leatherface movie as well in 2017. Yeah. Co-production God. with Millennium Films, though. But God, I, mean... I need to get off the grudges IMDb. I can't fucking look at the <laughs> images. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, we should do like a revisit to all the old, old, older, old horror movies that I grew up with. Because they're... Probably not as scary anymore when you rewatch them, but when I was a kid and I watched The Grudge for the first time, holy shit. Sure. <sighs> I'm all for it. <sighs> yeah. Well, so, but this anyway, has been a bit yeah. of a. Yeah. That's, that's going to be terrible. So. Um, yeah, most likely. Uh, but hey, they know. might surprise us, but I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I, I highly doubt it. Because they're We'll just have to see. Yeah. Wait, you know, they did do uh, uh what's it called? Is it Get Out or or um yeah, Get Out, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, movie. but that's that's not that's not that's not they just That's put not Bumhouse though. It. That's Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. whatever his name Peel. is. Peel. Yeah, Jordan Peel. Peel. Yeah. 
But that, that's, that's what I'm saying, though. If they get the right people to work on it, maybe it's okay. I don't know. I doubt it. They're not going to get the right people to work no, on it. No, because no one's going to want to make They're going to get fucking Jeff Wadlow, who made <laughs> Fantasy. And he's going to do the new Blair Witch movie because he's Hell dependable. No. And he yeah. can shoot it for $3 million. It flops, but still makes 10 times the money back. And then we're off yeah. to the races. Yeah. That's what they're going to do. Is that what, that's what they do. And then no, once, I'm depressed. Once every five years, they like put their name on an actually good movie. Yeah. Let's just end it here before it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hold on. I want to see just the, the other... Uh, for, I I found the, basically the same um, article, but from IndieWire, written by another person. See if they mention any other movies. No, it's just the same quote. I've been in blah 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 blah. Purge the gift. No, all they talk about is the Blair Witch Party. That's that's gonna be the big one. So that's that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, because it's the the first one, and if that works, they're like, yes, let's greenlight everything else. Yeah. Otherwise, they might do a couple more, and then they're like, yeah, whatever. Oh. Oh. What? Eh. Oh yeah. What? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Did you hear also that they're making another Matrix? Oh yeah. I think it was my boyfriend who mentioned it. Read it somewhere. I don't understand that. I don't actually. I haven't finished all of the Matrix movies yet. <laughs> and it's. I didn't even. I didn't even notice. I. Because they were. They were selling it as. Um, no, I, I think I. Oh, I, just, I, just, I. I mixed it up. Sorry. I thought it was the guy who made the Batman who's now making uh, <clears throat> whatever his name is. I thought he was making the new, but it's Drew Goddard, the guy who made the Cabin in the Woods. Um. And it's yeah, Neo is getting a new look. So it's it's a it's a it's basically a, a reboot, which is kind of funny because Matrix Resurrections was supposed to be like an anti reboot. People people yeah. kept saying like, oh no, it's intentionally bad to show you that you don't want a fourth Matrix. It's like, yeah, you, know, you can't just make a bad movie to like. No, yeah. that's not how it works. That that worked once, and that's with the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. Sure, um, but you know. But that wasn't in the 2020s. That was in the, <laughs> it was in the 80s. Yeah. 80s, yeah. <laughs> um, but and and it didn't even work because now they're making another one anyway. And the whole, the whole thing was like, oh, they're and like you can't make it without the Wachowskis. But now Lana Wachowski isn't even directing this one. She's producing it, whatever that means. <laughs> that means they have to so, put her name uh, on it, basically. Yeah. She has not, to oh, she's not producing. It. She's executive producing, which is literally just putting your name on it. Yeah, they they had like. Ke- Please approve that we are making this. <laughs> yeah, but that's what they said. Please like, put your name on it so that we can like put your name on it. Yeah, but that's what that was the whole thing with the 2020, the Matrix Resurrections. Um, Warner Brothers basically said like, listen here, Lana or Lily. I don't think Lily works with movies anymore. Uh, like we're making, we're rebooting the Matrix with or without you. She was like, fuck. All right, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not taking it away from me. Exactly. But I'll make it intentionally bad. <sighs> but yeah, now they're just making it without her. So it didn't work. That's that's, <sighs> that's what we have now. They're just they're gonna remake everything. They're, uh... Yeah, sorry, All we were right. gonna quit. We were gonna quit before you got too depressed. Yes, thank you, please. <laughs> now I am now I am depressed. Welcome so that's uh, that's club. that. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna title this episode. Cinema is dead. Just cinema is dead. <laughs> the Spawn Cast presents Cinema is dead. And happy birthday to Sean of the Dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> happy birthday, Sean of the Dead. Cinema is now dead. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening. Yes. Uh, check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene where I guess we'll, we'll just keep talking about this in the, in the uh, uh, companion piece. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. Uh, for our review of Civil War. Looking forward to that one. But other than that, have a good one. Bye. Bye. The Spoiler Cast is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It is produced and directed by Tobias Vedin and hosted by Tobias and Rebecca Vedin. Executive producer is Annika Vedin. I also want to give a huge shout out to all our patrons over on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Mom, 
Dad, Christopher Berlin, Daniel Gaiso, Mac and Mom, Laura Kinney, CK85.